Hi, and welcome to Module 5, in which we talk more about set operations, both um, elements, but mostly relationships between sets, and how to operate on sets themselves. Some of that we'll wait until later, because they're more complicated, but we've already done some operations on sets without really calling them operations. So if you recall from Module th uh, 2, we talked about intersections and unions of sets. And we said if A and B were sets, then that is the intersection of A and B, so the part in which they overlap. And this is the union of A and B in which you combine both sets together. As you might imagine, these aren't the only possible operators you can have on sets. There are other ones as well. So for instance, AC, I should move that around, AC is, so A to the to the C, it looks, like a, it looks like an exponent, but it's not. That means the complement of A. So the complement of A is everything that's not A. Now to define the complement, we have to understand something else, which means, in particular, what is everything? Right? What is everything that's not A? Well, sometimes it's pretty clear. Um, so for instance, if we have the set of all possible responses to a survey question, and let's say there are five responses. And let's say A is the set of two of the res those responses, right? And why do we do that? Well, let's say the responses included everything from, you know, let's say, you know, if it was a thermometer, say a feeling thermometer about the president, which is usually some numerical measure of how much you like the president, right? Ranging from zero, which is not at all, to seven, which is a lot. Right? Well, we might take zero, one, two, three, combine them together in a set and say this is a set of negative feelings about the president. In which case, A, the set A might be the set consisting of 1, 2, and 3. And then everything that's not A would be 4, 5, 6, and 7. Right? So the complement of A would be 4, 5, 6, and 7 in that case. More generally, we need to define everything, which we can call the universal set. The universal set is a set of everything in some particular context. If, for instance, you're dealing with the integers, the universal set is all the integers. Or the universal set could be all the real numbers. It's a concept that's primarily useful when dealing with subsets of things, right? smaller sets. So here, A is part of the universal set. Right? And the complement of A is everything else. Now, we've already sort of implicitly defined things here by talking about subsets. Let's just define that formally now. Um, a is a subset of B. If this is true, this is like a take a U and turn it on the side, so rotate it by 90 degrees, and put a line under it. This means A is a subset of B. The line underneath means it might be the entirety of B, so A might be the same as B, or A might be smaller than B. If you want to say A is definitely smaller than B, we call A a proper subset of B, and we use this notation right here. So the same thing without a line. That means A is contained in B. And we can draw these things, it might help to draw them. So we said before that if we had A and B, and say they're overlapped a little bit, then this intersect, then this shaded portion is the intersection. And if we had A and B again over here, then the whole thing gets shaded for the union. Now let's say we have some larger set, and A is over here, then if this is A, this other area is A complement, all this shaded area over here. But this not A, it's A complement. And now let's say we have um, a subset. Well, let's say this is B. And if A is over here, then A is a proper subset of B. Or if you have this situation, which A and B are the same, 
A is still a subset of B, but B is also a subset of A. So it's not A is not a proper subset of B. So these are subsets of of different um sets. So that way you can compare sets directly. You can look at the relationship between sets. Okay. Um, let's see. And again, just like for set inclusion, remember this means the element X is in set A. We can say A is not a proper subset of B by putting that line through. Right. X is not in A. A is not a proper subset of B. The line usually means not. Right. Nothing there. Okay. Um, Sometimes instead of a complement, you will see tilde a, which means not a. Sometimes you might also see not a written like that. All these mean not a. Right? Not a means everything that is not a. So everything in the bigger set, in the universal set, that's not a. You primarily see not a in either, either way it's written um, in logical arguments, and we'll talk about that in the module on proofs um, shortly in this video lecture. But those are most of the notation um, you get for for this. There's one more you didn't talk about yet that comes up a little less frequently, but still important, which is set difference. Set difference is written like a slat, like for a backslash, right? Set difference. The difference between A and B. It's not a, it's not a subtraction, it's, it's the set difference. It's A with all of B removed. So for instance, if that's A, it was a little bigger this time, if this is A and this is B, remember the intersection was the part they overlap, A with B removed is the shaded part of A not included in the intersection. You remove all of B from A and you're left with this, the shaded part. If A, if B is a subset of A, so if this is A and this is B, A Difference B is, in this case, the complement of B with an A. Everything that's not in B, you remove B from the set. That's what that means. It's the same as removing num you know, one number from the other one in that sense. Um, and that's most of it. Um, there's a few more. This would be a shorter module. There's a few more things to talk about that are a little more general than, than this. Um, we talked ways to define sets just formally. So we talked about right, using the curly brackets. I mean, this set consists of the numbers 0, 1, and 3 only. The curly brackets notation for defining sets when the sets are discrete. When they're continuous, you might define a set like this, or the set like this. The first one, B here, is all points between 0 and 1, including 0 and 1. C here is all points between 2 and 3, not including 2 and 3. And you can define sets that are partially, we call open and closed, but we'll learn that soon. Um, here, it's all points between 1 and 2, including 1, but not including 2, and so on. Um, but there are other ways to define sets as well that are worth talking about. So one is more to more explicitly define their ranges. To do that, we should also mention a couple more um, inequalities. In some senses, in some sense, this is inequality. It tells you that A is contained in B. It's sort of lesser than B. B is, in a sense, bigger than A. We can call B a superset of A and A a subset of B. You've more, you're probably more familiar with the more common inequalities that you see it with real numbers, right? Two is less than three, right? And there's less than and less than or equal to and greater than and greater than or equal to. Right? Five is greater than or equal to five. Two is less than or equal to two because it could be equal as well. Um, whereas six is strictly greater than five. These are more inequalities that are very similar to subsets in that sense. They're inequalities between elements of sets rather than between sets themselves, loosely speaking. We can use these to help us define sets a little more generally. So let's say I want the set of all numbers greater than 1. How do I define that? Well, I can do it this way. Set A is the set of all points x. Here x is a variable, like we talked about um, two times ago, two, two modules ago. That vertical line means such that. The set of all x such that 
x is less than or equal. I said greater than, didn't I? Uh, I can erase that. Okay, all points less than 1 now. Um, x is less than or equal to 1, and x is a real number. And again, the curly brackets refer to set membership in general here for this more complicated definition. So again, you read this, the set A is the set, I don't have to point at this, the set A is, excuse me for thinking, the set A is equal to the set of all x such that x is less than 1 and x is a real number. So if we drew a number line here, this whole number line is the set of all real numbers. If this is 1, this is the set A. There's an easier way to write this, which is in the real numbers, which is that A is the set of all numbers from negative infinity to 1. Infinity, this is the infinity sign, means it has no end. It's not a number in a strict sense, it's a number with no end at all. Um, so this means the set starts at 1 on the right, and includes 1, and goes all the way on to infinity on the left, to negative infinity. And you always put a curly bra a parentheses around infinities because you can't include infinity because infinity never is not a point. It just goes on forever. And that's another way of writing this particular one. But this type of notation over here is commonly used for um, defining more complex sets that can't be defined easily in this fashion. And sometimes you'll see instead of this for such that, you'll see a, a backwards, this, this is less common. This backwards set inclusion means such that as well. Or you might just see the letters ST just means such that. Um, it's, it's um, they vary, basically. Okay. Um, before we close here, a couple more s uh, smaller points. Sometimes you might want to refer to large numbers of things at once in a set. An upside down A an upside down A, let's try it again, try it again. An upside down A like that, that means for all. That means for all possible elements in the set. So for instance, you might see for all x in the real numbers, so this reads for all values of x in the real numbers, this means all possible real numbers, something is true. Or for all y greater than or equal to 1, something is true. It's a way of referring to large numbers of a, to large to sets or large numbers of elements all at once, for all. Sometimes you just want to know something exists in a set. You use a backwards capital E. This means exists. So this means there exists an x in some bigger set such that I'm using ST this time because X is greater than 1. That means there's some point in capital X set that's greater than 1. So the, the exists that um, capital E tells you that there's something in that set. Sometimes you'll see an E with an exclamation point for not exists. Um, why it's that other than a slash, I don't know, but that's often, that's sometimes used, but that's less common. Um, finally, you might also see for such that a colon. So the set of all x such that x is greater than or equal to 1. The colon, the such that, the vertical line, this, they all mean the same thing. Some mathematical notation has many different versions of it. Some does not. Um, most of that's an accident of history. That's basically it. Um, so thank you. And the next module will be about properties of sets. Thank you.